This is a sequel to the how to choose your pronoun video. In this video, I will list some of the most common second person pronouns in Japanese. Each pronoun will be described based on the following dimensions or parameters. Formality or politeness, gender, age, frequency, and context where applicable. Keep in mind that this list is not going to be exhaustive and I will only cover pronouns that are particularly noteworthy. Let's begin. Number one, anata. Anata is probably one of the first pronouns you learned in your Japanese textbook. Although it is pretty neutral, anata should not be used to refer to people you want to respect. So don't use it in formal situations like business meetings or job interviews, and don't use it when you're talking to a stranger. When you want to refer to people you respect, use their name plus san or sama to be even more polite. For example, Tanaka-san or Suzuki-sama. Anata is also a bit too formal for your friends or family. When talking to your friends, use their names. When talking to your family, use familial titles like Okasan or Ojichan, or simply call them by their names. Now, you might be wondering whether you can use Anata at all if you can't use it to strangers, friends or family. Well, first of all, in Japanese, pronouns are not used very frequently. If you want to sound more natural, it's often better to drop your pronouns. Secondly, anata appears more often in writing than in everyday conversations. Anata can also be used when you want to sound serious or a bit formal towards people you know well. Anata is gender neutral and can be used towards males or females. However, some married women refer to their husbands as anata, whereas the reverse is uncommon. Anata is also age neutral, but it may be a bit too formal for children. Also, you normally don't use anata towards people who are older than you. Let's ask Google how many times anata is used. Anata in hiragana gets 687 million hits. Anata, however, can be written using the following kanji as well, based on the gender of the referent. These kanji are only used in novels or formal writing. These versions are gender neutral. The latter is usually pronounced kanata and means somewhere far away. Summary. Pretty neutral across the board, but don't use it towards people you respect. It's more common in writing. If used in informal situations, you will sound serious. Number 2. Anta. This is a derivative of anata, and therefore it is more informal. According to Google, it is used 24.5 million times, so it's much less common than anata. It is used among friends or towards someone who is below your social status, so don't use it towards people you respect or strangers. Some people find this word offensive, even if you're familiar with them. It is gender neutral, but it is not used very often among younger people. Number 3. Kimi Kimi is another common pronoun, and you are likely to know this one as well. Kimi has 586 million hits on Google, not excluding the other meanings of this word. This kanji is also pronounced kun, and it is a term that is often added to the end of a boy's name. For example, Takashi-kun. So don't confuse Kimi with kun. It is a fairly informal pronoun, so it should not be used towards people you respect or in formal situations like job interviews or business meetings. However, even in these situations, some people who have a higher social status than you might refer to you using Kimi, especially male bosses. In this case, Kimi is not meant to be rude. Romantic couples also use Kimi to refer to each other, and most of you must be aware of the sci-fi romance comedy anime film Kimi no Nawa, which uses Kimi in its title. Kimi is otherwise used towards people who have the same social status as you, or someone below your status. Kimi is age neutral, but as mentioned, older males may refer to you using Kimi. A fun fact, this kanji has a respectful connotation. When pronounced kun, it may refer to a monarch or a ruler. For example, kunshu means emperor, taikun means a ruler or a shogun, and the English word taikun derives from this Japanese word. Bokun, on the other hand, is a tyrant. Number 3. Omae. Omae is another pronoun you may have heard before. It is usually used by males, and it is age neutral. Omae is very informal and impolite, and it is used towards people of lower social status, so don't use it to strangers or in formal situations. Many people will feel offended if you call them omae. Even among friends, I wouldn't recommend using this unless you are extremely close with them. Some people also might say omae when they're angry at you or when they're trying to insult you. According to Google, omae gets 115 million search hits, so you can see that this is a pretty common pronoun. Number 4. Otaku 
Otaku is a pretty uncommon way of saying you. It is rather formal, and it is often used towards strangers, but it is less polite than using people's names, plus, san, or sama. It is gender neutral and technically age neutral, but you don't hear children using this word. Otaku is also the polite word for your home or your family, so you may find it a little confusing at times. When it means your home or your family, otaku is a very formal word and can be used towards people you respect. You may also be familiar with the word otaku, which means someone who is too passionate about a certain hobby and usually someone who is socially awkward. This word derives from the second person pronoun otaku and it is said that many otaku would often refer to each other as otaku. Number 5. Kisama. If you watch a lot of shonen anime, I expect you to know this one. Kisama used to be a polite way of saying you in the past, but nowadays this pronoun is used to refer to people you hate. You rarely hear this being used in reality, but some people might use it when they're angry and want to put up a fight. Interestingly, Kisama gets over 5 million search hits on Google. It is predominantly used by males in fiction, and it is age neutral. It is informal and rude, so please don't use it towards anyone in Japan. Number 6. Some first person pronouns that can also be second person pronouns. You may find this puzzling, but a lot of first person pronouns are also used as second person pronouns. Boku, for example, is used when you're talking to a small boy. An example sentence would be Boku maigo, are you lost? Where Boku refers to the boy who is lost. Jibun is another example. Recall that jibun was originally a reflexive pronoun that means myself, but it is used both as a first person pronoun and a second person pronoun. When used as a second person pronoun, it carries a rude connotation, so it should not be used towards strangers or people you respect. Onore is an old fashioned first person pronoun, but it can be used as a second person pronoun. When used as a second person pronoun, it is quite rude, so you can equate it with kisama to a certain extent. This pronoun also appears occasionally in some shonen manga or anime. Ware is another archaic first person pronoun that has become a second person pronoun. It is not very common and like the previous examples, it is quite rude so do not use it to people you don't know well or people you respect. Teme originally derived from temae which is another archaic first person pronoun. Just like omae, kisama and onore, teme is very rude so don't use it in real life. Number 7 Familiar nouns and formal titles. You will often hear people referring to each other using familiar nouns such as otosan, onechan, and the like, as well as formal job titles such as tencho, the manager of a shop, and sensei, which can mean teacher, professor, doctor, lawyer, author, politician, or even a manga artist. The word okyakusama is often used towards customers and clients, and it is a very polite expression. This is the end of this video. Let me know if you have any questions or requests, and check out my other videos. See you next time.